Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by Big League Chew. This is episode 274. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? All right. Up? Live reaction. Yeah, Miggy is up. Miggy's up one, to the plate. One. Second A-B of the day. Ooh. Can it happen? Low strike call to get him to 1-2. It's been a while since we've had a live reaction, but... I know. That alas. first that first A-B, we were watching together, and he had that fastball up. I thought he got into it. Ah, strikeout. Ah, too bad. Well, Miggy, Miggy, for, come on, guy. All right. Well, maybe, for, maybe we'll catch him at the end. Maybe towards the end of the episode. Maybe. Uh, happy Thursday, happy Friday, happy basically weekend, folks. Yep. The best time of the week. What do I always tell you: treat Thursday evening like it's Friday night. Bingo! I'm guaran- off tomorrow too, so <laughs> you have a guaranteed three day weekend every week. Let's That's how it let's works. run it. Yeah. That's how it works. Uh, yeah. Nate, let's uh, recap the last few days. Been I feel like been a lot going on the last few days. Didn't we weren't sure when we ended last episode if we were going to have uh, a whole lot to cover, but here we are. Let's start with Tommy Fam talking about Luke Voigt slide. Now you roll your eyes, but I know that you, despite what you say, you feel strongly about this one way or another. So. You either just don't care or you care immensely, and I'm curious to get your take on on which it is. All right. Well, here's the thing for me. I don't care about the slide. I didn't have much of a reaction to it. Um, I'm not – look, Luke Voigt isn't the most fleet of foot baseball player out there, so it takes a lot for that train to stop once it gets going. And he was he was moving around third. Um, I didn't see a huge path for him to go through or to take to get to home plate. I thought it was a little weird where his hands were of like, like almost like pushing his head, which I thought was strange, but I don't, the slide itself, it is what it is. Like. We're, I think we're so sensitive to any contact now because we don't see anything. Like, we never see anything broken up at second base. Obviously, there's nothing happening to catchers really anymore. So, like, there's really just no contact ever. Um, so, I think that's why we're reacting a little bit towards this probably more than we ordinarily would. My issue is what we talked about last week with fam. And what did I tell you was going to happen? I said he started off, what was it, one for 26? Something miserable, and then he goes off that night. And then I said, sure enough, it's going to be the next game, and he was a triple short of the cycle. So Yeah, that's how it works. But my issue is the quote that we read off, that he said, I'm here for nothing else but to get my stats. His words. Now, once that hit the hit the streets and everyone started reading that, going to go ahead and assume that there were probably some choice words for him in the clubhouse. So everything that, that fam has said about this Luke Voigt slide, let's go find a gym and fight somewhere. What are You're going weird- back. You're backpedaling on what you already said because you clearly stated – that you're a bad teammate and you don't care. Well, that's the that's the strange part about this whole thing is he, that quote was from when he signed. Exactly. So like so, this wasn't just like last week. And then he comes out, I guess once that quote resurfaced, mm-hmm. he comes back and like you said, backpedals and says the most bizarre thing. Who's gonna go to a gym with you? Yeah, what what are you to talking handle about? this? He's saying like they know also, how I get down or what what are you talking about, Tommy Fam? The dude's lost it. The dude is doing his best to stay relevant. 
honestly, how do you? I'm I'm curious. How do you see that playing out? Do you see like are you gonna te- are you gonna get Voight's number and text him like, hey, bro, here's the address. Um, we'll meet up sometime, maybe on the off day before you guys head out of town. Maybe grab a bite to eat beforehand. Is, Why is am cool? I picturing when Michael and Dwight go to the dojo? <laughs> That's <laughs> literally it. That's literally it. And Tommy Pham would be Dwight walking out of there just with his he- head hung low. Um, yeah, dude, Luke Voigt, uh, that's, that's big country right there. My man, my man benches, benches more than both of us with one arm. So that guy was just born to just mash baseballs and crush skulls. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm picking that fight, but Either way, it's just it's just fam backpedaling because he caught heat on this quote. Like you said, it resurfaced. It got more more clicks this time around because of the way he started his season. And now he's now he's backpedaling. Now he's trying to act like a good teammate. You don't get both, dude. You already clearly stated you don't care. You literally said I don't care about anything else but getting my stats. So that includes backing up your teammates. That includes your your remarks after the game when nothing happened in game. Benches didn't clear, right? There were no scraps or anything that happened. Like it's odd to to wait until it's all over and say, "Hey, Luke Voigt, meet me in the parking lot after." What are you talking about? Shut or, it or down. Maybe meet me at the Denny's tomorrow and. You, you have four hits this year. Relax. Focus on you, dude. Like, I'm not not worried about Tommy Fam. I'm tired of talking about Tommy Fam. Two times in a row is too many. Yeah. What I mean, of all the guys this season to talk or to cover at yeah, he's length, got more coverage back, on this than in back back to back episodes, I would not have put my money on Tommy Fam. Um yeah, I mean, he had, he had a bunch of sound bites afterwards, which I don't even honestly feel like reading them because it's just all ridiculous. But to your point, I think he really did. He he went above and beyond to try to make yeah. it appear as if he's this team guy. Because if he hadn't said those things when he got signed, almost guarantee you, you're not going to hear a peep out of him after this slide happens. But because he... He's like, wow, couldn't have been blessed with better timing on this. I have an opportunity to come to come to the plate for one of my guys. Yeah. No. You no. don't care. You already stated you don't care. Like emphatically stated that yeah. you didn't care. So you don't get to go back. I hate it. That's it. No more Tommy Fam talk. Yeah, um, done. I don't want to talk about him anymore for the rest of the year. Ever done. You're red. Ever. Your reds aren't doing anything. You're not doing anything. We're done with you. Here's your quote graphic. Love that. Uh <laughs> let's let's look at a couple of series that uh wrapped up yesterday, Wednesday. Uh two relatively noteworthy series. Uh the first one we look at here is the Braves Dodgers series. So Dodgers take two or three. As you would probably expect. But uh, a couple noteworthy headlines here. Freddie Freeman hits his first Dodger home run versus the Braves, which also happened to be his first at bat against the Braves. That was cool. At, I still don't know how I feel about that relationship. It's so weird. It's like, is it does Freddie Freeman have some deep-seated bitterness against the Braves right now that you'll never truly hear him express because he's Freddie Freeman? Or is this like a... Because when he hits that home run, it's not like a sweet revenge kind of feeling. It's more of like a I'm awkward and this is uncomfortable situation. I I feel like he's uncomfortable right now. Yeah. I would well, not, agree. No, not I'm awkward and this is uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable and this is awkward. Well, I'm yeah. awkward too, but he is he's a little awkward, but that's okay. But 
Um, yeah, no, I, I think he is uncomfortable. I think there's a lot in with this. I, I heard D-Row talk about it on MLB Central the other day where it was like, you know, uh, how long was he a Brave? Like 12 years or whatever? That's That's an entire routine that is just completely shaken. You know, your routine every day, going to the ballpark with your kids, your routine with your family, like everything has it, it completely flipped. Not to mention you're going to a Dodgers team that expects to win a World Series every year, right? What you did with the Braves last year is one thing. No one expected it. It's great, but no one expected it. You're Now you're going to Dodger Town where that is the goal no matter what, year in and year out. And there's a lot of, lot of, you know, pressure with that. Now he doesn't have a routine, right? Now he's not totally sure how the, the fan base feels about him. And every question he's answered for the last month has been about the Braves. Nothing to do with the Dodgers. So it's like, at what point is this guy going to be able to settle into his new uniform and his new clubhouse? I'm waiting for it. Now that this series is over... I could see Freddie just kind of going off for a couple of weeks, just just getting back to playing baseball. All this stuff is over, and he gets to do his thing and just perform. But I, I mean, feel he, bad for him. He didn't exactly have a down series. I mean, no, he, and I'm not I, saying he did. I'm just saying like that. At what point is he going to be able to play with without that narrative without the sure. well how do the Braves feel about you how do you feel about the Braves we have former Braves players with comments what are your comments about their comments it's like when at what point does he just get to play baseball no no I get and I get what you're saying I'm just saying for the people that thought that maybe this series would be a distraction or yeah I don't he's know, a pro like, though emotions. that's why he's a just he's just a good pro like he's yeah. a professional like and that's emotion, cool the emotions didn't get the best of him I mean two two bombs i think he bookended the series with with bombs mm -hmm. right it was yeah. yesterday um but i mean he had a series max freed on the other side game two Oof. yikes wow near perfect yeah started off retiring 15 the first 15 guys he faced and then i believe it was a leadoff single in the sixth, I believe. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Braves got the winning game two, uh, which was the game he started. And at that point, they it, they had snapped the Dodgers seven game winning streak. So nice if you're the Braves to get that win to at least like you go to L. A. Okay, you lose the series, but at least yeah. you don't get swept because that's just not a good look, especially with the way. The postseason went last year. You feel like you gotta, yeah, you gotta rally. You gotta re up again and kind of reassert yourself. Um, but outside of that, it was the Dodgers series to take. Um, do we see this being a playoff series in the in the near future? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Um, and from the from the early, however many games, about by the time recording and all that, about a dozen games in the books. Have you seen enough from the Braves to think that they've got what it takes to get them to October? Um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, it's just it. It's so hard to tell. It's really early, and this is across the board. I mean, you still have guys that are kind of. Still trying to get going. You know, Eddie Rosario's trying to get going. I think Austin Riley had kind of a rough series. Um, you know, it's just like there's certain guys that just let them get going and it'll be fine. Acuna's going to be back in a couple weeks. Um, but Matt Olson's doing his thing and the pitching staff is starting to figure it out, right? Free to starting to settle in. Once I feel like once your ace settles in, it's just. It's kind of smooth sailing for the rest of the staff most of the time. Um, that'll give an opportunity for their bullpen to rest a little bit. So I'm not stressed about the Braves at all. Um, yeah, nothing's bugging me there. But I do think that uh, I'm curious to see how things go 
because I, I feel like you're you're losing a little bit of an advantage defensively once Acuna gets back. Because at this point, I do feel like they're kind of rushing Acuna just to get to DH, right? Yeah. And there's a good chance he's probably going to DH. I would I would assume ninety percent of the games for the entire month of May, you know, before before he starts playing full time in the outfield. So that means Azuna's in the outfield. You know, it's going to be interesting. You know, how does that affect them? But that's it, dude. Like, I don't I don't have any other question marks about the Braves. They're going to be fine. And the Dodgers will be fine. So I'm excited to see what that matchup is going to look like in the postseason. And then I think they do meet up back in Atlanta soon, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I did see that. Yeah, and Acuna's looking good at the plate, too. I mean, I aside from a, a couple ABs I, I saw when – when he was with Gwinnett. Um, ooh, Alex Cora has COVID. Yikes. Hmm. Um, outside of a couple ABs, I saw him take for Gwinnett. Um, I'm not certain how he's been doing down there, but a couple of the videos I have seen, the swing looks there. The hands mm-hmm. are quick. Yeah. The bat speed is. Oh, yeah. He's fine. Through the zone. I think it's just, you know, like I did watch, um, I think he got thrown out at first or beat out a single or something like that. It was a hard 90. And you just watched how long he took it. Like he kept the speed going like halfway out the outfield before he started to slow down. So I'm I'm curious to see what those quick knee jerk movements are going to be, um, you know, going first to third on a, on a single trying to score from second on a base hit, whatever it may be. Curious to see how that affects him. And then, you know, cause like I, the last thing I think any baseball fan want, wants right now, and, and I mean, especially Braves fans, is to have them rush him back just to have some type of, of minor injury or setback, you know, in this, in this process. I think Braves fans would say, you know, let's give him the rest of May if it means we'll have him fully healthy, guaranteed from June on. Right. Versus rushing back and, and risk some type of setback. So, um, yeah, I'm curious to see it. But, I mean, he was also playing in the outfield in this rehab assignment. And we saw that video of him, you know, knocking up Definitely one of the up. yeah one of the people in the crowd. So, I was like, there's, there's – I think he's going to be okay. I'm not really stressed. Another guy I think we can say is uh... – He's doing okay. Max Scherzer of the New York Mets uh, took a no-hitter into the sixth inning on Tuesday. I believe he had the, the nightcap game. Uh, seven seven innings, one hit, one earned run, three walks, 10 Ks. 102 pitches, which I felt was one of the more, no- one of the more noteworthy aspects of that. Sad, outing. right? It's sad that that's now noteworthy. <laughs> well... Yes, but more so for this for this stage of the season, yeah. Um, and just with his recent arm history and and all that. But dude, the Mets looked good, man. Yeah, I, I know the whole Mets are gonna Met thing. In fact, uh, it was last episode that you you did not think that was the case, and then they go out and take a a Tuesday doubleheader sweep against the Giants, who also look to be yeah i mean they they were playing strong. okay too like it wasn't even like the the giants were playing bad that was a good that no, I, mean, I watched the Frankie first Lindor game had it was the a good game off yeah that, that first game so i mean yeah it was it was neck it was, and neck it was a good game and i think the mets were down through like five or six they were down for most of that game so i just i think that the the way buck has created this mentality and culture they're aggressive on the base paths they're smart about taking the extra 90 um i know we didn't totally talk about it but it's starting to become popular now that this uh you know like a tag up situation sack fly right they think that he might have left early buck did this on purpose and he let his players know the rules that when that pitcher steps off the mound for the appeal to throw to third, he sends that runner on first. 
and gets in a rundown and gives up that out because once that pitcher engages that runner and gives up the appeal, he can no longer appeal. So that run is safe. And that is, that is just the little stuff that I think is, is what Buck is capable of. Not bad for an old he's, guy. He's a professional manager, <laughs> truly professional manager. He knows what he's doing. Um, and I, I'm excited to like, for the first time, I think in a long time, maybe even ever, he has a talented roster. Like the early nineties Yankees weren't doing anything. You know, he had the back end of Don Mattingly. He had the beginning of Derek Jeter, kind of, but that's about it, right? And then Joe Torre comes in and, and has, that's where all that success came in. And then Buck was with the Orioles and nothing to, to talk about there either. So this is the first time that Buck has a roster that he's truly managing that has, it's built for success. So if you put that intelligence with this roster, I think it is a good, it is a good build, dude. I, I'm excited to see it, but I mean, like you said, the Mets are hitting the ball around. They're they're running the base pass aggressively, and it's just like it's fun to watch. And now you have, you know, Max Scherzer who's coming in, and I feel like is Chris Bassett like the baby Max Scherzer? Like he's coming in. You saw his quote. He's like, I don't care what your name is on the back of your jersey. I'm coming after you. They asked him that about how he felt about Soto, and he was like, I don't care. That's a dude right there. I don't care who you are. I'm going after you. Like, let's let's ride. And it was cool. I was watching the game. Literally every time they showed the dugout, if there's a pitcher conversation between manager or catcher, Chris Bassett is right there. So there is this mentality that I think, th I mean, I don't know if Chris Bassett is getting enough love. I don't know if he had that mentality before. I'm sure he did. But all of that mentality with Max Scherzer is like this mental toughness, this this focused game plan. And it seems like it's a good mix of focus. It's a good mix of laughter and fun with Frankie Lindor. Tenacity. Right? There's like there's this combination of good stuff. I I I'm just saying, dude. I think uh I mean Oakland fans would tell you guys the real deal and i think to your to your point of whether or not he's getting the love he deserves i think a lot of and i'm not i'm not saying talent love no 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 because everyone knows how well of a no, start I, he's had but no no yeah i understand but i'm saying i think his, a lot of people's eyes were opened following that uh incident last season uh with the comebacker and i think people are like this dude is dying to get back on the mound yeah. he's not taking any extra time in this return this is kind of a dude yeah and now that he's in a a bigger market with a lot more eyeballs on him i mean good for him yeah good for him yeah i agree i think um yeah it just it feels different and i think that was the first mets game that i sat down and watched truly um was that first game of the doubleheader and i was impressed it was like this the calm confidence i think they were down three or four for most of the game and there was just this calm we're good we'll keep doing our thing and sure enough you know and i think that's that that's what buck does yeah, i don't I think that say. can be expressed enough that's what he does that calm professional it's a marathon mentality helps yeah i think that definitely stems from buck um so yeah i mean they look good that series we'll see if they can keep it up as we know this is not a sprint it's a marathon so yeah. this but I just, it's could the flexibility too roster wise the yeah. flexibility roster wise i mean you have jeff mcneil playing left field a lot of times now right now nimmo is going to be back from the covid list i mean you have starling Marte like any of those guys can play any position in the outfield and, and hold it down. You know, it's just like Lindor's yeah. starting to feel comfy being yeah. in New York. Like, I, it's just a lot going for him. I, I think the narrative is gonna gonna fluctuate throughout the season. I don't think we're gonna see. No, yeah, I agree. I don't think we're gonna see. 
consistent and every time, dominance throughout the whole year. But I agree. And every time they have some type of little skid where they lose five or seven or something like that. Oh, I'll the be narrative, there. The narrative I'll be gonna, there. Yeah. The narrative Hand is going to be, well, Mets, here's the Mets doing Mets their Mets thing. Met. Yeah. Relax. Now, I will say the Mets are a, the Mets are an improved team. Mm-hmm. But the narrative every year is the Mets are going to met because of how they just totally falter collapse, at the yeah. end. If they even yeah. make it to the end. Like we yeah. saw last year, that was just a collapse. Yeah. I think <laughs> I don't I don't necessarily know what the what the trajectory looks like for them once we get to the fall. Yeah. But I think they at least have the legs. They have the structure to get there. Yeah. Because of because of people like Buck and yeah. Scherzer, as you mentioned. I agree. It's this combination of intensity, but also veteran, you know, like the whole, what is the saying? Uh, cool heads prevail yep. kind of thing. I think there's a combination of that. Uh, Nate, a team we just mentioned with uh, some talk on Bassett, the Oakland Athletics, his former club, they made headlines recently, not for any particularly good reason, but yeah. they drew the worst crowd, as this headline is quoted as saying, they drew the worst crowd without pandemic restrictions since 1980 on Tuesday against the Orioles. The announced attendance was 3,748. <laughs> what do you expect? I don't, I don't know. I mean, good for fans. Well, here's the thing. I'm all, I'm all for the boycott and like, uh, Danny Vietti, uh, he usually he has a, a number of good takes on some things, and he shared this thread on Twitter talking about how the boycott's on in Oakland, mm-hmm. saying that this is this is from or this is a result of fans having to put up with a total lack of commitment to winning to putting out a a product on the field that could that can compete and Mm -hmm. sure you've got people saying well they've been relevant for the last number of years don't really know how yeah it's not because of what you're investing in and your players yeah Yeah. like they find a way to make it work but it's and surely your analytics team and and all that but i mean you're not exactly going out there and signing these big names to yeah i I think it's i think it's the, the rinse and repeat is what the fans are tired of it's the rinse and repeat. We finally have a core and we don't lock them down. We don't invest. And you know, Moneyball perfectly laid it out for us. When you have guys like Damon and Isringhausen and Giambi guys like that, that are just like, as soon as they find success, you know, they're going to, you know, hit the road and they're gone. And then the A's make zero effort to keep them there. At some point, it's just like, when are we going to understand that you can hold this product, you can lock them up, and your return will be those fans sticking around because you're going to have a continued success. Instead of just writing out your ARB years with your core and sprinkling in some veterans, Let's lock our core down long term. And that's the way baseball is trending. I think we're going to get back to seeing guys that are on teams for 15 or 20 years for their whole career. And we get to root for them. That's how it's starting to trend. That's what teams are trying to do. Wander Franco is most likely going to spend at least 75% of his career as a Ray. Acuna, Albies as Braves. Right? You're seeing that trend, Tatis with the Padres. You're seeing that trend. It's going to happen. Why can't the A's do that? That's what the fans are asking. Why can't we do that? 
Right. And so back to the, the thing that Danny was saying, he's basically saying that, that the boy, like I said, the boycott's on, they're trying to make a point, but there's also the side of the argument that you have to consider where it's like, what good is this boycott going to do? You're only, you're only furthering the cause of ownership to say that I don't care about this city. You don't care about this team. Let's pack up. And head to Vegas. Like, yeah. it's just a weird, I don't know. Like, if you knew you were still going to be around for a, a number of years, okay. If you just make the the personnel dump that you just you just had. Yeah. And then the fans' response is, well, we're only going to show up. We're only gonna, there's only going to be like 3,000 of us show up for the opening series. That would make sense. Yeah. But the A's are so close to just packing up and getting out of town. So it's like the boycott, I, I appreciate the and I applaud the effort and I see what they're trying to do. And I think that's great because who wants to go watch a, a product put on the field by powers that be that literally couldn't care less? So I appreciate that. But is that the best move? Here. It's it's not it's I if don't you think want to keep your team around. Well, I don't think they're doing this to have they already conceded? Have these fans already conceded? Been like we we know what's coming, but we're just gonna make it a little more difficult for you and, uh, and for your checkbook on the way out. I I don't know. I, I feel like this is a little easier to answer because you know, you and I root for teams that we're not locally attached to. Um and I think we're just used to that. And I'm okay with it. Um, I, it, I don't, it doesn't bug me of where I'm at. I'd love to catch Yankees games, but it's fine watching on TV. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm curious if, if, if certain A's fans are at the point where they just rather have an A's team that they can root for, even if it is no longer in Oakland. Right? Is that what they've conceded? conceded giving up the idea that fine if they're saying in Oakland this is what we're going to continue to get then no I'm done with this I'd rather them be in Vegas and give us a team we can root for maybe that is the the route they're taking maybe that's the mentality I don't know um but I do think that the what this accomplished is this exactly this us and probably most baseball podcasts and networks and shows are talking about this. It's all over social media. So it is accomplishing quite a bit to be a part of the narrative and say, hey, this is bad. This is embarrassing. So if anything, I applaud these fans for boycotting if they are in fact boycotting or if maybe they're just not interested in going to see that team. I don't know. But if they are boycotting, this is helping that salary floor that we're fighting for, that players are fighting for. It's helping that narrative. We may not see it in this agreement. We may not see any success from the A's anytime soon, but I do think that this helps. It helps push that needle a little bit further towards that side of getting a salary floor and making these owners spend money that they have, they do have. But we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel. I just. I feel bad. It's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. If you don't want to own a team, don't own a team. Like, it, I, I'm tired of it being looked at as as somewhat of a like a like a profit and loss business only. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's have some competition. Like, like let's be have a some, fan of the team of the exactly. team that you're investing in, and like I'm not asking you to go out there and take BP with the guys. I'm not saying you need to be a baseball expert, but at least be competitive enough to where you want to win. You know, the owners that we know that we can name are because of their competitive nature, right? George Steinbrenner, Mark Cuban, guys like that care about winning. That is their goal as an owner. And that's all you hope for as a fan. That's all you want. So sell the team, please. Get out. 
Because A's fans don't want you. Oakland doesn't want you. Baseball doesn't want you at this point. So it's either Vegas A's or it's going to go, you know, to Charlotte or Nashville when we expand teams and they're just shipping out of town and becoming a brand new organization. You choose. But I think they need new owners and I don't think relocating is going to change anything. I think at this point, Vegas is a lock. I hope so. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. And we'll get, so. in, we'll get into it in closing the book, but I think Nashville has got its own little project up its sleeve. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Nate, we're going to talk, we're going to switch gears here, transition into some Jersey talk. We got to talk about these Padres Jersey patches. And uh, we actually just saw the release or the leak rather of the Royal city connect jerseys. But I think there's uh, something you'd rather share before we do such a thing. 100%. Hopefully we see a big league chew pouch pack, like a little patch. They're just like a gum patch right there on the sleeve. of One of these jerseys would, one day you down. I would, I would buy a Jersey with that. Ooh, give me like the sour apple on a, on a Kelly green A's Jersey. How do you feel about that? Kelly Green Vegas jersey. The Vegas A's, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Founded by former left-handed pitcher Rob Nelson, Big League Chew started from humble beginnings in the Portland Mavericks bullpen in 1977. For more than 40 years, the iconic pouches packed with shredded, flavorful bubble gum has become the number one shredded gum of athletes everywhere. Big League Chew has sold more than 900 million pouches and is designated as the Hall of Fame bubble gum. Grab some gum and head to Big League Chew's social media channels at Big League Chew on Twitter, at Big League Chew Gum on Instagram to show off your big league bubbles. You can also find a list of retailers or purchase any of their products directly from their website at BigLeagueChew.com. Big League Chew. Give me an update on uh, Tigers game. Where are we at in the lineup? Miggy is up first in this next half. Oh, let's go. All right. Well, keep an eye on that, and uh, we'll we'll pause as needed. Up first um, or second, I think. But he's definitely getting up. Let's uh, let's talk about these Padres jersey patches. Look, I'm just going to come right out and say it. It could have been worse. True. It could have been much worse. It's not ideal. I think, for one, I think they went a little big on the old Motorola patch. Honestly, didn't even know Motorola was still doing its Dude, thing. Dude, I'm telling you, I did I, you? There's no way I I was the only one that thought Motorola had gone under. Can I get a razor? I wanted that was I want one of those old razors again. Well, in in like one of the little promo videos for this announcement, they had one of those phones that like folds folds up or uh, whatever. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? We're going back to flip phones. It's yeah, it's coming it's full circle, baby. Funny Let's that, go. Funny how that works. Yeah. yeah, but I thought for sure Motorola had gone under. And even if they hadn't, I thought they had probably filed for bankruptcy or something. Not in any situation to be agreeing yeah. to any massive deal like this. I, but yeah, yeah. learn something new every day, I guess. Um, yeah, all that to say, the logo could have been a little smaller. I mean, that thing was, that it's was big. a honking logo patch. Yeah. Um, but... I'm just glad it's on the shoulder. I am too. And Keep not, it there. And not, uh, what's the word? Perpendicular or whatever to the the Nike swoosh. Because that would have been a mess. Adjacent. That Adjacent, the that's the word. Go. Perpendicular. <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> Adjacent, that's the one. Yeah, that that just would have been a mess. Even though I'm sure that's that's coming down the road. I, I'm, I'm almost... Yeah. Counting on there being multiple sponsorships. I guess. Matches. Maybe. But I, I love the the fact that it, it's brown. And that makes me yeah. wonder if these companies are okay doing that. I'm you gonna know? go I, I'm they? gonna go ahead and make a prediction and say that at least half of these sponsored patches don't fall in line with that approach. Yeah, you, I agree. Because I mean, there's certain have ones that have ones. colors, right? You're gonna like have Google. some of these big companies that are just like, no, 
we're Google. Do you think we're going to be yeah. adjusting our logo for you? Like yeah. Motorola, that might make sense. If Motorola is, in fact, kind of on the out. So like, well, here's the thing. Here's here, the thing we'll, is that. We'll change our co logo color for you if you just put us on your jersey. Well, here's the thing is that it's got to be. What what companies really need this? Do the Googles of the world need this? That was our same question when Nike took over, right? Does Nike really need to put their logo on there? Do they really no. need that help? You can put it on there. Just put it on the sleeve like Majestic did. Yeah. Well, uh, Majestic didn't exactly have the best ending. So no, yeah. I wouldn't listen to them. All right, Mickey, here we go, baby. Oh, let me switch over here. Ah, oh, one. All right, slow down. This is third time seeing, Come on, seeing Miggy. Monty here. Give me something good, Miggy. Yeah, I need to see this. Ball down. 1-1. One, one. All right, I'm behind. Oh, no, just kidding. I'm way ahead of you. Are you? I'm two pitches ahead of you. How did that happen? I don't know, dude. Well, now I'm nervous. What's your count? It's 3-2 now. Ball in the dirt. I wonder if anyone else is... Come on, Miggy. I wonder, I, it's, is, I, does anyone else have MOB TV issues? My stuff, like, will always fall behind. I'm yeah, getting it, updates on the end of the game sent to my phone. I'm like, what? It's top eight. How did I fall behind that far? How was oh, the all-time? Oh, boo. You rung him up, although that was the right call. Actually, I didn't care. Walk him or strike out. It wasn't a hit, so yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really care the outcome there. Yeah, that was definitely a swing. Oh, yeah, definitely a swing. All right, now it looks like he's probably going to have to get it off of somebody in the pen. You kidding me? Come on, Miggy. Yeah, was just, that was a swing for sure. He was heated. I mean, this was the day to do it. It's beautiful, or at least it looks beautiful there in Detroit. I'm sure it's a little chilly, but... No, it's like 60. Is it really? Yeah. Well, we're not going to be able to... I mean, unless we just want to sit here in silence for an hour until he comes back up in the night. Yeah, this, this is where the game really slows down anyway. Yikes. Um. So for this jersey jersey patch... We're going to be seeing it in 2023. My question for you is, as a Yankees fan, assuming that's coming, what patch would you like to see on the Yankees jerseys? And if you're listening, I would encourage you to think about what company you'd like to see on your team's jersey because it's coming. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, I would say, I mean, there's some big companies. I'm thinking of like the, all the billboards and stuff on the scoreboard in Yankee Stadium. I'd be okay with like Ford. You know? Yep. I'm cool with like Ford or I think they have, uh, I think Delta Airlines is one of their big sponsors. Are there any ones? In, are there any companies in there where you're like, I'm kind of a fan of this company, or I'm a patron of this company, and I'd like to see it on there? Because I know who I want on the Red Sox uniforms. Says, yeah, I know he wants to, but I don't. Know. I mean, there's so many. I think there's just like a, a crazy amount of companies that have started in New York City. They're just like, I don't know. <laughs> there's a plethora of to pick from, but. I don't know. I, I said, I mean, if uh, there's no point in advertising, but I was saying like FDNY or like NYPD, like that kind of thing, but that's not going to happen. So I don't know. You may just give me like a, a slice of pizza right there. Just right there on the, on the, get the a, arm. get a Sabaro patch on there. Yeah. Favorite, <laughs> there favorite New York pizza joint. <laughs> this is red lobster. This is where it all happens, right here. Um, Chili's, maybe. Um, <laughs> no, just give me a Duncan patch right there. I would. You know how people are like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy the the patch yeah. when they come out. No, 
I would actively get one if it had. Yeah, that. see, like that. Nobody it's like would a Duncan, though. Yeah, because it's like a kind of like, um, like if the Mariners had the Starbucks logo or something, you'd be like, okay, it's like it's local, it makes sense, that's where it started. It's all about the culture. Yeah, so I get that. Duncan would make sense. It would be kind of fun, I think. Um, speaking of fun, how do we feel about these? I actually have to pull it up because the. Uh, this picture quality sucks. Yeah, picture quality. But hey, that's what you get with a leak. But somebody, yeah, someone's getting fired for no, sure. No, this happens every every go round. There's always a leak. It's just a matter of how how high quality the leak is. And this is friends. Let me tell you, this is a low quality leak. Yeah, um, this is like a. I'm walking by and <laughs> let me snap a, some pictures as I'm walking by with my phone. Yeah, my Motorola Razor from <laughs> 2004. <laughs> Um, um, from what I can see, absolute filth. Yeah, I mean, absolute filth. This looks very much like an MLB The Show type jersey, which I'm like, okay. I love it. It's got that navy blue. They're gonna go with red or red, uh, like that powder blue, baby blue undershirt. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going with the. The City of Fountains theme, which didn't know, which again, that's part of the reason I like. Yeah, you get to learn series. a little more. You get to learn about something. Didn't know they were city, the City of Fountains. Don't even know what you have to do to be qualified to be the City of Fountains. You just have to have the most sit, most fountains. Probably, I think that's you know it. What? Maybe you know they what? have the. I think the. We're going to take this little said, did you know and turn it into a history lesson here. There is something I learned about like the fountain in the stadium. That it's like one of the biggest fountains in the country. Is it really? I think so. Everything you need to know about fountains in Kansas City. This is from visitkc.com. I wish I was a Royals fan because I would just get a KC hat and it would make it would just make perfect sense. Their hat looks cool, too. That's me, KC. It's true. In case you didn't catch that. I didn't, actually. I didn't put it together. (laughs) In case you didn't know my name. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Kansas City's first fountains date back to the late 1800s when they served a purely utilitarian purpose. There it is. Utilitarian purpose. Thirsty dogs, horses, and birds drank water when passing to and through the city. First of all, what are these animals doing on treks from city to city? Are they with people? Are they on their own? What kind of what kind of just world? back in the eighteen hundreds, man? They're just doing their thing. Kind of just roaming from city to city, just passing through. Yeah, taking a load off. <laughs> Walking around in the morning, getting a bagel, and this, just watching a moose go down the street. You know, that's, that's the way it was back then. Just passing through. Is that a bear? Don't, don't mind me. Smile and wave, boys. Um, Soon thereafter, the city began erecting drinking fountains, each with their own distinctive architectural styles, features, and themes throughout the downtown area to provide its citizens with safe drinking water. Enterprising individuals integrated intricate sculpture into fountain designs to both beauty, beautify properties, and add distinction. All right, last paragraph. Kansas City's love affair with fountains has flourished ever since. In 1973, the City of Fountains Foundation was established by a Hallmark executive and his spouse after the two took a trip to Italy and met and found many fountains in disrepair. Wanting to restore Kansas City's own collection of fountains, the fa- foundation was created to build new fountains and manage and maintain existing structures. There you go. <laughs> Today, visitors will find more than 200 fountains scattered throughout the metro, large and small. Artistically intricate and cleverly simple. Does it talk about Kaufman at all on this Wikipedia page? Mm. Uh, let's see. Kaufman Fountain. <laughs> I was kidding. You're really looking this up? He is. He's looking it up. <laughs> of course I am. Kaufman Stadium fountain seats. Can you sit next to the fountains out there? 
I think you can swim in the fountains if you pay enough. Kauffman Stadium fountain seats. Seats! Did I say seats? I sure did. Nate, let me tell you about SeatGeek. It's the answer to all your ticket needs. Are you looking for tickets? Do you have plans with friends or family to make it to an upcoming game or concert? Or are you even looking months ahead to nail down a date to get tickets before they sell out? With SeatGeek, you can find tickets to games, concert shows, and even theater performances with just a few easy clicks. We're making it even better for you if you're a first-time user of SeatGeek. Next time you add some tickets to your cart, use our promo code THE, the number three, the number zero, take pod at checkout to save $20 instantly off your first purchase as a first-time user. That's all you got to do to save some of that. Keyword word, kish, kish. Enter promo code THE, the number three, the number zero, take pod at checkout. And if you need more clarity, it's our social handle. <laughs> See, geek. Um, so back to these, back to these, uh, city connect unions. Yeah, they look good. They look clean. I'm glad they didn't waver from the colors too much. Do something wonky. Um, I don't know. The, I, I'm a huge fan of when, and you can show the people on YouTube, your Jersey. I love when we have stripes on the sleeves. It just, I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of giving me like some college ball vibes, though. But I don't I mean, care. It's not. That's yeah, fine. I was gonna say it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of yeah. what it makes me think of. That's cool. I'm with it. I think they're sick. And why? I mean, more powder blues, just always. If there's an option for powder blues, yeah, let's if you get can it. incorporate that somehow, some way. <laughs> yeah, always, just always it. toss it in. Super um, swaggy. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. The the hats look pretty sharp too. Um trying to see where they are here. Yeah, it's just got that I mean you can look them up. If you got Twitter, just type in City Connect Royals and you'll see the hats. I mean they're pretty sharp, man. They got the little uh powder blue little crown at the top. Mm-hmm. Big fan I'm of that. A fan. Subtle. I am a fan. I mean, hey. Do, are hey, we, do we know when the... We read off the schedule weeks ago. I just don't remember when. The official release. Um, yeah. uh, April 30th. I feel like oh. this is a pretty early leak. Usually Perfect. it's like a few days. I mean, you got over a week. They're eventually going to like make those photographers take their phones away or anyone in there can't yeah, have a who's phone. Who's getting their hands on these? I, I just doesn't understand. I yeah. just don't understand how this happens. Yeah, it's coming. It's definitely coming. All I know is the Dodgers have the worst. That's it. I mean, that's all. That's all that needs to be said. Those are just awful. Yeah, it's nothing. Terrible. Um. Well, I mean, Miggy, we we thought we had a good chance here at getting Miggy. Yeah. No, we're getting into pitching changes now, and. Yeah, it's just it's gonna be a hot minute. All right, so let's just. How do you want to do this? Do we want to? Do we just want to go with the fanfare now and then talk about the feat when it happens next episode, or we just want to pretend like he does it, so that by the time that people hear it, they can hear our excitement about the three thousandth hit? Yeah, I mean they start a series against the Rockies tomorrow. Is it go at ahead home? And assume, yeah. Okay, as long as it's perfect. At home. Need that for sure. Definitely need, need that. that at home. So he's got that protection. And then they and then they go to uh Minnesota after that. So let's hope he gets it in no, he, this next series. If he goes over the series against the Rockies, we got bigger issues here. Yeah. Um All right. Well well, I'm just gonna go ahead and congratulate him. Mickey, well done. A great way to start the weekend. Notching your three thousandth hit either in your final AB against the Yankees or in one of many ABs versus the Rockies. Good for you. Yeah. Well-deserved. It's been a heck of a career. One of the best hitters of our generation. Yeah. It was a great feat um, to witness that I'm <laughs> going to witness in either, to witness in either minutes or potentially days, but I will, I will witness it. One way or another. So um, congratulations on the feat that is yet to technically happen at the time of this recording. Well done. Yeah, I think he joins a very short list. I think there was only 
six or seven guys with 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. Um, Can't imagine that list being terribly long. Also, uh, it's just through and through, man. The guy's just a pure hitter, one of the best to ever do it. Um, Awesome watching him stick around with the Tigers. I wish uh, they were more relevant longer for him to have a chance. I wish we could have gotten more, you know, postseason Miggy. But this is a very solid career, and and I think it speaks a lot for hitters that have gone through Detroit and have have now caught so much success. You know, J.D. Martinez, Nick Castellanos, guys like that where, you know, you see that there had to be some conversations with Mickey. You know, there had to be conversations that, that helped them out with their, with their career. And uh, that's, this is the type of player that you hope for. This is the type of player that every organization hopes for. And that a guy that becomes a true pro and, and coaches and plays and competes and sets the tone and does everything he's supposed to do. So, um, we're lucky, man. We got to see some amazing amazing hitters in our lifetime and he's absolutely up there for one of the best right-handed hitters of all time yeah so again miggy congratulations well deserved on your soon to be 3000th hit that may or may not have happened by the time the person listening to this hears it <laughs> um no joke side we'll we'll regroup We'll uh we'll look at it a little more in depth next episode, I'm sure. Look at maybe his career a little bit more in, in depth, um en route to three thousand hits. But uh let's just hope he does it, you know, 'cause would hate to have to milk this out another Would episode. hate that, yeah. Would hate <clears throat> it. If, if that's the case, we'll have to just we'll have to talk about it next Thursday, I guess. Yeah. Um I got some closing the, the items for closing the book. Unless you got anything else you want to talk about, run through Send these it. and we'll dip out of here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the headlines to come out this week, Major League Baseball, possibly in Nashville. Who knows? Uh, former A's pitcher Dave Stewart is actually leading that charge. He uh, he and his group plan to raise $2 billion to purchase an expansion team with the proposed name of the Nashville Stars which is the tip of the cap to the Negro League team from the 1940s and 50s. Sounds perfect. I mean, they already got the Nashville Sound AAA team there. but I know, dude. I, I need to make my way to Nashville. I just heard it's an absolute party. I heard it's just a blast of a time. I've got, uh, I've got family down there. Yeah, that's, that's got to happen. Uh, yeah. I don't think, honestly, to be straight up with you, I don't think, I think I've been to one minor league game in my life. Wow. And that was an isotopes game in Albuquerque when wow. I was in high school. That's it. None other. So I'm not, I, I don't know. I got to go to Nashville before they get a team. Well, like I said, yeah. they have a team, but it's not. A no, I'm team. saying that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'll go to it. If if Nashville has a, a major league team, I'm going to that game. True. But I want to go to the sound game and just take it all in. Take it all in. But I've heard the Nashville's just awesome, yeah. dude. All Nashville's their bars have like live music and you got live music inside. You got live music on the rooftops. I'm like, Nashville's sweet. electric. Um and then uh another note here. The did you did you hear about the the Washington Capitol Mm -mm. having to evacuate. So apparently Washington Capitol, they were like, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to get out of here. Everybody's like, well, what's going on? What, what's happening? They, They said, well, we think there's a terrorist threat. If you go look outside, there's people jumping out of an airplane. They're parachuting in might be getting infiltrated because we we're not we're unable to make contact. And they said, "All right, well, let's begin the procedures." 
Turns out the Washington Nationals failed to contact Capitol authorities to oh, inform no. them that the man parachuting was part of their pregame festivities. Oh, no. Not a good look if you're the Washington Nationals. Like, come on. Clean yeah, that would have been real bad if that plane's getting shot down because – can you imagine? Oh, scary. I mean, that's got to be a nightmare. But, like, also, if you're in the Capitol – Someone's like, definitely I, getting fired there. Yeah, like, I kind of We've got two it. people fired today, I think. Whoever leaked that photo at the Royals, yep. you're gone. And then this goon with the Nationals, like, clean it up. What are we like doing? You've already got your work cut out for you this year. You've got a, <laughs> a, just a terrible team, and now you're going to be getting yeah. in trouble with the authorities. But honestly, like, if you're in the Capitol, I'd, I'd kind of be a little worried, too. It's like, oh, an unidentified plane with men parachuting yeah. out of it? Especially with how crazy stuff is now. Honestly. Yeah, what a wild scene. And then last note I got here, the Padres set an airless games record consecutive games record i don't know if they've made an error yet i'm they may have i'm somebody correct me but the last i saw it was like 13 games but i think the record was uh that's really solid you think i'd well, i would have actually written the name the the number of the games you would um, think this is your think. segment Padres continued their record setting an errorless streak, having opened the season with 12 straight games. So this was from a few days ago. I think they've actually continued it, but I think the record was, I think the record was 11 is what I saw. But yeah, I think they're up to like 13 or heck even 14 now if, if they haven't made an error yet, but you know, good for them. It's kind of a weird little. Is that Tatis not being at shortstop? Is <laughs> Honestly, that what that means? Probably. Well, I mean, I don't think Tatis deserves continued ricochets after last episode that was that was a bit much i'm just saying bit much <laughs> uh but yeah that's all i got for closing the book unless you got anything else that's it happy weekend folks get outside i think i'm gonna go uh i actually we just bought tickets yesterday i'm gonna go catch uh little mets diamondbacks action on saturday that's really funny so. because I was looking at tickets for the Nats because I was like, you know, it just feels like a baseball weekend. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. We'll, well, we'll Paige and I are going with a group of friends, and I'm pretty sure I'm the only one there that cares about baseball, and we are just sitting at the, on top of the stadium. So I'm like, There's this nothing is, wrong with that, man. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I haven't, it's just I haven't been way do. up there in a while, but Chase Field is different. All right, dude. So. You, you have money. We get it. We you're, see. You're rich. I'm not. You don't, but, sit, <laughs> I, you don't sit up there with the common folk ever. We get it. Oh, no, I mean, I'm just saying, geez. like, I'd rather just watch on TV than be up there. But we'll see. I don't know. I mean, it'll be my second time to chase. I got to see what I think again. I don't, yeah, give me an updated report. See if they change anything. Yeah. It was closed last time. So I'm curious to see if it's going to be closed again on Saturday. But. Yeah, I don't know who the Mets have. What's that? Uh, what's that lineup for? On. Let's see. You're you're thinking of the Nats game though. Who are they playing? The Giants, I believe. Um. You wouldn't be getting McGill that game, would you? No, he just threw Taiwan Walker. No, he's on the IL. That's not right. I was just reading names. Oh yeah, the D the D backs are leaving. They're in DC today, and then they're heading out. They're heading back out. D backs. Uh, why doesn't it show me probables? The ESPN app sucks. Just trash. There's a bunch of ads down here. Yeah, I'm not getting any probables. Can you help me out? What day? Saturday. Mm-hmm. I feel like McGill just threw. Hopefully it's Chris Bassett. That'd be sweet. Uh, TBD on both ends. Lame. DeGrom yeah. comes back just for Nate? <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. That's it. Big big fan of the pod. I think I saw where Scherzer might be going Monday, so you'll miss him. Yeah. Other than that, that's all I got. Peace out, folks. We'll see you guys next week. 
Yeah, don't you dare go chasing any curveballs either. Enjoy your baseball. We love y'all, and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy. You thought we were going to go into the weekend without giving you a live reaction. <laughs> we sat here and waited for probably about an hour. We didn't make you sit through all of it, but we're giving you a little bonus segment here. We waited for Miggy's fourth and presumably final AB. If this goes extra, sorry, you guys are out of luck, but yeah. we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll at least give you this fourth AB and see. Oh, oh no. you got to be kidding me. Oh, <laughs> they hit it with the intentional walk. Oh, <laughs> it's licky, dude. There's no way. There's no way Miggy would have not gotten that knock. What a bust. What a bust. Well, I'm going to add this anyway, because why not? Just to let the people know we tried. Um, the Yanks are out here trying to win a game, dude. They don't care. Can we undo this? Can we, like, can we run this back? I'm a little bummed, but I get it. I mean, this is a one-run ball game. It's Miggy, though. Come on. What do you think? <laughs> Miggy's going to park one on the street? Come it's on. To get to, it's to get to lefty-lefty matchup with Austin Meadows. It makes sense. It makes sense in, in a manager's eyes, but All right, well, at this point, not no, I just, fun for fans. I'm going to hang on. to. We're going we're gonna to stay on here for the extra few seconds just to see if Meadows parks one into the seats here. <laughs> Baseball gods might give him a little extra pop on this swing. Oh, yeah, that'll drop. Let's score him. That might score them all. That's tough. Yeah, that's baseball gods for sure. Oh, no, Nate. It's 3 nothing Yankees. Hey, everyone, have a great weekend. This was fun. <laughs> we'll see you next week.